I'm Josephine Okot. I am an entrepreneur, so founder and CEO of a seed company based in Kampala, Uganda. That's where I come from. And the company is Victoria Seeds Limited. And uh, as of now, I am the Yara Prize Laureate for 2007 for a green revolution in Africa. Congratulations for that. That's quite an uh, accolade, I think. <laughs> so great. A good, good start then to... Uh to continuing your work. So tell me, in terms of the African Green Revolution, why is it so important? Why do you feel your work particularly is, is important in helping farmers um, achieve more? Well, the, actually, to achieve any green revolution, you must start with inputs, the right inputs. And seed is frequently the only input that smallholder farmers can afford. but. Other than that, it is the key one that determines the upper limit of yield and even the productivity of other inputs. So without food security, it is difficult for any society to move forward in terms of other development. So I think it is critical that we have seed systems that work as a starting point, but it's just market, it's a starting point for a green revolution. It is not the panacea, the one old answer to the green revolution. Now, there have been some concerns raised this week about seeds, and particularly in terms of multinationals um, promoting varieties that maybe aren't appropriate or maybe that smallholder farmers can't afford. Um, how is your company different, or how do you feel about that particular comment? I believe Africa is too diverse to like, give a one-fit solution to it. For starters, it is so diverse in terms of agroecological zone. One area may prefer to eat bananas as the staple, the other may eat cassava, another one may be adopting rice, and most of uh, a large proportion of Africa, of course, eats maize. So when we speak of multinational, I think that may only be in those markets that particularly perhaps grow some of the cereal crops like wheat and maize, but it wouldn't apply. So in my case as Uganda, in, although it's a small country, but it is so diverse that uh, even you cannot just focus on one crop per se as a company. We promote and, and, and seeds for a number of crops, legume, a whole range of cereal, millet, rice, sorghum, all of it, even vegetatively propagated crops like the potato, yeah, with, with high nutrition, fortified potato, th those are the items that we should promote. So I think that is not really, um, I think it's a concern that isn't, uh, shouldn't really scare anybody. Instead, as a small enterprise, I should demand for, for support to build capacity to compete with multinationals that come. That is the key because the multinationals are big but sometimes situations, market opportunities uh, are more um, appropriate to smaller enterprises. They are nimble, they are very fast in being responsive and they take advantage of, of opportunities. So I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an opportunity as well and to me I, I don't see that as a total threat. It becomes a threat if we don't have the capacity comp to compete in the global economy. That is what I'm advocating. It's the reason I'm here. Frequently, we are just associated with the small farmers and the challenges of low productivity. But that's not about it. Along the value chain, we have to compete in a global economy. And the competence starts from the farmer. They should produce quality products. And even the input suppliers should supply products that can make our, um, um, along the value chain, make us be very competitive in terms of quality and volumes yeah, and standards. So Victoria Seeds is, is just uh, you know, one company you're obviously doing well, but how can companies like yourself that provide you know, the variety of seeds that farmers at, at um, smallholder level really need be encouraged to, to do more in the African landscape? Uh, um, thank you for, for, for the commendation that we are, not do, we are doing well. I believe I'm just um, courageous and determined. It's very challenging and sometimes extremely frustrating. First of all, we are dealing with farmers, the poorest of the poor, but we borrow money from the same bank that Shell, a multinational, borrows from at an interest rate of 22%. Do you think that makes sense? 
We need development banks. We need banks that are focused specifically on agricultural development, banks that can see the difference between the airline industry, the oil industry, and the one that is focused on the poorest of the poorest of the world, who are now actually victims of climate change. They can't address the drought that affects them. Their crops are wiped out by flooding. So those are my frustrations, but nobody seems to see it. It is really simple logic that a company like Victoria Seeds should get sort of different financial support. Why should I be borrowing m money from Barclays, where Shell, Uganda, a huge multinational, gets their funding from? I don't think I can, I can really build my capacity or do much more. And there are, of course, other challenges, like now, no farmer can, farmers can no longer afford fertilizer because of the increase in fuel prices. The fertilizer price in Uganda has gone to 105%. So the demand has dropped from 80 to 20%. So if farmers cannot afford fertilizer, even the returns from the seed we are supplying will soon start on a downward spiral. So all the little gains we have had in increasing yield from better varieties is soon going to be reversed. When I mean soon, give it just one and a half years, two years maximum. So it has reached a dangerous level. So we really need interventions that can make a difference and not rub off some of the efforts. So those are some of the reasons why I don't see too many entrepreneurs in agribusiness. And last year we had a flood. What did my bank do? They demanded, why not selling so much more and bringing money? I said, you don't see the flood. So we really need a total different kind of financing and not just the traditional one. We don't have crop insurance. So what happens when you allow small enterprises to deal with commercial banks? And if there is a drought, is it the problem of the small enterprise? So you'll see lesser and lesser entrepreneurs. Personally, I'm even thinking of closing up because I don't know when the next drought will come. Well, that would be a huge shame, I'm sure. But I know also you've had a particularly frustrating trip to get here to, uh, to Salzburg, to the Global Seminar here. And yet you are obviously determined still to attend. So what is it that you want to share with your colleagues here? Well, mainly these are the key challenges because in most of these conferences, I don't find very many private sector participants. And, Syria, uh, and I don't think many really can understand our challenges unless we ourselves speak. That is why I'm here. And, uh, and also, sometimes uh, we need a paradigm shift now, even in terms of research. We don't just need research for crops that can increase the yield or result in food security. We need research that is market-driven, research that can, can encourage entrepreneurial, I would say, entrepreneurs to come along the value chain, uh, to re research that adds value, research that makes Africa competitive. And it's the private sector that can spot the opportunity. The private sector that can spot the opportunity. When they come to Austria, we visit the supermarket, I'll see the opportunity and I can translate that into a viable business. So that is why I decided to come. It's difficult for people from public bodies, which they do serve a role, but they normally miss those opportunities. So I just wish that in most of these conferences, half of the participants are the businesses. However much we talk, it can never be translated into real wealth for Africa unless the business is able to translate those opportunities into viable ventures. Josephine, thank you very much, and we wish you well with all your future endeavours. Uh, thank you, Suzanne, for the interview.